Hello there once again everybody, this is UXW Bill here, and we're actually having a nice little summer shower right now. It's been pretty quiet here, although the weather people say that we are under a severe thunderstorm advisory, and probably will be until sometime into the night. I haven't actually seen too much severe thunderstorm around here, so hopefully that'll miss us if it is indeed coming this way. We did have one nice little power bounce not too long ago that kind of shut things off and then turned them right back on again, and that's always a good thing to do. That's not the subject of this video. I actually want to talk about my uh, growing up briefly. And that is to say that, uh, in a way, although I'm you know, very happy to live the, in the time frame that I've lived in so far, and to see the technological advances that I have, the one thing that I kind of missed out on was the whole Heathkit era. Now my dad, my dad used to assemble Heathkits pretty regularly. He made a lot of things, and many of them we still have, and they still work beautifully today, which is not at all uncommon for Heathkits. But by the time I was even remotely of age to consider assembling such a thing and to have the skills and stuff like that, I had long since missed out on it. But, but as a youngster in the early 1990s, I can just vaguely remember the last of their catalogs, looking at the neat stuff they sold, and wishing that I had some, you know, the knowledge to either put it together or, you know, more importantly, the money to actually buy it. Now, there is one kit that my dad never completed, and that was a Heathkit color TV set. We still have all the boards, the metal chassis, the cabinet. I believe all the books are downstairs for it in the basement. The picture tube is sitting there. And I have said that one of these days I need to go through that thing and actually find out what he did and didn't get built. I believe most, if not all, of the boards were fully assembled. And I should start going through the books one day and try to get that thing put together and get it working because it would essentially have zero miles on the clock. And it would be kind of cool to put something on that scale together. I guess I'm working my way up to that. And that's why I'm glad that uh, people like YouTube user 45 player have actually kind of reignited the whole uh, build a kit at home thing. I know there's a couple companies like Velman that carry the torch. Radio Shack stores around here have actually started stocking uh, electronic kits again. But for the most part, they're just something that people don't do anymore. And that's the one thing that I feel bad about kind of having missed out on. So as you can imagine, after putting the uh, AM stereo transmitter together and having a reasonable amount of success with that, I did make a little assembly error, and, but I sent it back to YouTube user 45 player. He fixed it right up. He sent it back to me, stood behind it perfectly. And in fact, I would say if you have any business to do with him, I have been a very satisfied customer of his. He's always stood behind what he sold me, and I've been very happy with what I got. So... End of endorsement right there, on to the meat and potatoes of this whole video. I was cruising around eBay looking at various things and I actually found something, an electronics kit that someone had purchased nearly 30 years ago, but never actually put together. And so I'm going to try to do exactly that. What I have is the Symmetric Sound Systems Audio Signal Restoration Unit, the AS. Are you? And I hear that there are a couple people online who have these. They say they work quite well. This is a noise reduction unit that doesn't utilize pre-processing of the source material. If anything, I could say it's most like National Semiconductor's dynamic noise reduction system and that you don't have to feed it a specially pre-processed pre 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 source like Dolby noise reduction or the DBX noise reduction systems require. So that's what this thing is probably mostly like. Um, they have provided a complete, although not quite as good as I remember Heathkits being. See, that's actually hand illustrated right there. Obviously by someone who had a lot more artistic ability than I do, because uh, I'm one of these people who can't even draw a straight line. <laughs> that's pretty sad, isn't it? Especially since I come from uh, a mother, at least, who very artistic, very capable in multiple mediums, and in fact she'd love nothing more to do than to teach art, but she can't seem to find an art teaching job in this day and age, and that really that really kind of sucks the big one, but I could go into a whole rant on that, and uh, I'm not going to, so just steer clear of that. But obviously somebody tried to do a decent job putting these instructions together. They are typewritten, and there's some PCB artwork showing uh, the front panel PCB being put together as well as what you're supposed to put on it over here, in which order you're supposed to do it, and all that good stuff. And then the back panel PCB. And then the author of this, uh, the designer of this kit, explains how to test it, how it's supposed to work, 
how to use it with other noise reduction systems and in what order it should be used with noise reduction systems. It's never my intention to violate copyright, but the company that made this kit has been out of business for years. I think the person that made it may well be long gone at this point. It's hard to tell. But I intend to scan these instructions and convert them to a PDF. So if anyone out there has one of these kits or uh, finds one of these things in a thrift store somewhere, they'll have some idea of how to actually use it as nothing more than a sort of community service. But here's a magazine article that was photocopied from uh, Radio Electronics Magazine, authored by Joseph M. Gorin, and I believe he's the person who designed this kit as well. He talks about various noise reduction techniques from companies such as Carver, MXR, RG Dynamics. Uh, even Pioneer got in on the game. That's a Pioneer device, and of course over here is a piece of equipment from DBX. But before I build this kit, I will definitely be scanning all of this stuff in just to make sure that it is uh, preserved for future generations who are interested in it. There's something from Phase Linear, something from KLH. I'm not sure what that is because it's actually cut off, but it's another DBX device. And then over here is a dynamic noise filter. And as you can see, the heavier this gets toward one side, the harder it is to keep it uh, to keep it up where the camera can see it and to keep it from falling on the floor. So I will definitely be making some uh, reproductions of that available to whoever is interested in them, because obviously the company is long since defunct, and I think the guy who designed the kits is probably long gone as well. There are a couple of uh, addendums in here. Um, I also got instructions for a kit that I did not buy from the eBay seller who had this stuff. So if you find uh, if you find their PLM2 power level meter kit and you don't get the instructions with it and you win that auction, by all means get in touch with me because I will be glad to scan these for you and provide them uh, with what you should have gotten in that kit. This stuff was revised. Uh, I'm assuming that the 11 is the month. This stuff was revised on November of 1982. That was a pretty good month. Someone who I like very much showed up then. <laughs> it's a funny thing to say, isn't it? Um, here we have an addendum, March 27th, 1981, that talks about improving the performance of the unit, giving it an even greater range of functionality as well as additional notes on modifications for the unit. And then, the real deal is in here. The actual kit itself, ordered by someone nearly 30 years ago, and I believe it's all complete, and that everything needed to do this is here. Here's the uh, metal body of the unit. Bags of components in here. These don't look to have ever been opened. There's hardware right there. One set of electronic components for one of the boards here. Number of ICs inside that one, some of which are pressed into foam, some of which are not. Hopefully those components are all good. Another bag of components. These will be for the front panel because these are the uh, sliding potentiometers, as well as the LEDs and stuff. And then the actual print boards themselves, which are really pretty nicely made for what they are. So I will be putting that together in the near future and probably making a video about it. Hopefully it'll even work when I get done with it. That, that's definitely the plan at least. And then of course, besides all of these components and stuff, there are a couple other things to this. They provided the stuff you need to uh, assemble it into a decent finished cabinet. There's some wood blocks and stuff in here for the sides. The back, I believe. Not sure where all these go, but obviously as I read the instructions to figure it out. Um, they say that these should be sanded, but I'll be darned if these aren't sanded, they're very close to because they have a very smooth finish on them. So I think really the only thing I'll end up doing to these is oiling them as they suggest in the uh, documentation that came with the kit. So there you have it. If you were wondering what my ne next big electronics project is, that's it right there. Oh yeah, there is one more thing, just real quick here. A shout out to the person who probably originally bought this little kit. Gabe A. Sellers III, if you're still out there today, 30 years on, I'm going to assemble the electronics kit that you bought way back in the day. So if you're out there and you have access to a computer and you run across this, I'd love to hear from you. To anyone else, 
If you have a comment, if you have information on the Symmetric Sound Systems business, I would certainly love to hear from you. So thank you for watching, and definitely do feel free to leave me a comment.